This video is made possible by Spencer Shipley at Packy Webb Ford in Downers Grove, Illinois. Spencer is dedicated to finding the right car for you in the quickest time possible. Give him a call or contact him with the information up on the screen or found in the description below. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2021 Ford Bronco Wild Track. Up front is a 2.7 liter turbocharged V6 and down below is a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Bronco for a bunch of different reasons. This is one of the hottest vehicles to come out of 2021. It was very highly anticipated and there's just a lot of buzz around this. So I'm excited to see if it's actually worth all that hype or if it's just another drop in the ocean. The second reason is the fact that I've driven a lot of Jeep products, Jeep Wranglers, the Jeep Gladiator, and so I'm excited to see how this stacks up to those competitors. One thing I also love about this Bronco is that it is one of the star cars in the new Forza Horizon 5 video game. I've been playing that a fair amount, and so it's fun to drive something in the game and then get to drive it in real life. Really, really special there. But before we get on with the rest of the video, if you are interested in helping out the channel, there's a bunch of awesome links in the description below. One is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor, would not work on this car, but it will pair to your smart device and help you diagnose issues in your vehicles 1996 and up. There is con plates, which is a suction cup license plate mount, or cash for cars if you're looking to sell your vehicle. Huge thank you to all of our sponsors, and every purchase helps out the channel. But let's get on with the video. Let's get back to that 2.7 liter turbocharged EcoBoost V6 under the hood. Well, it makes 330 horsepower and 415 foot-pounds of torque, which is awesome. However, that's not the only engine offered. You can also get a four-cylinder turbo that makes about 300 horsepower. And this makes a fair amount of power more than the four-cylinder. So if you want to do some true off-roading or towing or anything like that, this is really the option that you want. All right, 2.7 liter turbo V6. For a vehicle this size, it's definitely quicker than a stock Wrangler. Now, I haven't driven the V8 Wrangler, but, you know, compared to that 3.6 liter that the Wranglers get, that is a much nicer punch than the Wrangler. Like I said, paired to it is a 10-speed automatic transmission, which is pretty much par for the course from Ford at this point. The F-150s also have the 10-speed, and I liked it there, and I like it here. It's a fine automatic transmission. However, in a very rare state, you can find these Broncos in a manual transmission, a seven speed manual transmission. If that's something you'd like to seek out, however, that's most likely going to be a custom order. I have yet to see one in person and have yet to hear of anyone that has bought one. So I assume that's gonna be a real niche thing. Last but not least, of course, the Bronco is four wheel drive. We'll talk about how to select that in a little bit. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a digital gauge and a physical gauge. The physical gauge off to the left is my speedometer, as well as I do have coolant temperature. And then I have this awesome digital gauge. My RPMs is a <laughs> digital sort of loading bar. I absolutely love that. I think it looks fantastic. As well as my speed is a similar looking gauge. I can also cycle through like average MPG, my odometer, trip odometers, average speed, and things like that. And I can also change the view that I'll cycle through right now. I do have off-road gauges I can look at, so turbo boost, oil temperature, transmission temperature, very important for towing and such, and battery voltage, off-road status, pitch and roll, power distribution, tire pressure, gauges. And so that screen is actually highly customizable. And I really, really like that. Ford has been doing a really good job with their screens recently. In the Explorer ST, it's the same thing. In the F-150, it's the same thing. In the Mach-E especially, it's the same thing. So, And even the Escape gets really cool gauge cluster screens, which I can always appreciate. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my cruise control options. And on the right, I have my options options for that gauge cluster screen as well as skip track and a bunch of my selectors. What I don't like about the steering wheel buttons is how they feel. They're kind of mushy. They don't have a very satisfying click to them, 
which I would have liked to have seen in a button that I don't want to look down to see what I'm doing. They don't really feel that satisfying. The overall steering wheel looks good. It has the Bronco logo in the center instead of a Ford logo. And overall, it feels nice and it is heated here in the wild track trim. To the left of me, I do have a grab handle, which is actually very helpful. I have a bunch of lighting options for my gauge cluster lights, headlights, as well as my mirror lights, because this does have zone lighting. We'll talk about that when we talk about the infotainment system. One really nice touch I just noticed is the hood latch actually has a little Bronco on it. Very nice. And on the door, I have my lock and unlock handle to get in and out, and that is it. Up above, I do have six auxiliary switches. Now these currently don't do anything. This is so if you hook up an extra light bar or any extra piece of equipment that doesn't come on the Bronco, you can wire it directly to the switch and it'll look factory, but do whatever the heck you want it to do. The F-150 does this as well, which is a very, very nice feature, especially knowing that this car or this truck is going to get modified. Moving into the center, way up top on the center, I actually have a 12 volt outlet, interestingly enough, all the way up on top of the dashboard. Also what's up there, we have the B&O premium sound system from Ford. You can find this in pretty much all other Ford products in their higher trims, which is a very good sound system. I tend to like it. And then we get some interesting buttons. These are some four wheel drive settings-ish. I can lock my front differential. I can lock my rear differential. So interestingly, this button here is actually the trail turn assist, which will help you make tighter turns out on the trail, but it has to be in four wheel drive. As well as traction control and other things of that nature with a hazard switch to the far right. Then we have this giant infotainment screen. So let's pull over and talk about it. All right, so let's talk Bronco infotainment. Now it is the sync system from Ford. So you'll find this in pretty much all other Ford products. I've gone through it in a lot of videos, but let's talk specifically Bronco. We can go down here to audio, AM, radio. Please don't copyright me. We have phone options. We do have navigation options as well. And we have our apps for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Love to see that here in the Bronco. Then we do have our settings, phoneless, clock, general, sync, navigation, display, connectivity, vehicle, vehicle hotspot. You can get a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot here in the Bronco. Mobile apps, system updates, Ford Assistant, things of that nature. Let's go to vehicle here, see what kind of vehicle settings we could do. We could do max idle time, which is great. My key, onboard serial number, basically pretty standard stuff here. Windows, we can remote open from the key fob, which is nice, and you can turn that feature on and off. Then we do have this little Bronco icon that is specific to the Bronco, and it actually looks like an original Bronco, not a new one, which is nice. Not a whole ton of features. Once we do actually get into here, we do have driver assistance. We can turn them on and off. Cruise control, which is adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, pre-collision warning, backup camera, blah, blah, blah. But we do have zone lighting. So this is something that the F-150 gets as well. And as you'll notice, there are lights on the mirrors and around other parts of the Bronco. And I can turn on sections that I want lit up. So say I'm doing something out in a field or something like that, and I want lighting off to my right-hand side. Say I'm setting up a bonfire pit, you know, out at the corner of my 80-acre lot. You just set up there, put some light on the situation, and then we're good to go. I love this feature. The F-150 gets it as well, and I think it's really, really helpful, especially for a utility vehicle. I can also slide through this little side screen. I can sort of do a split screen view if I'd like. Trips, that's kind of cool. Cool picture of a Bronco, fuel economy, off-road status. So I can keep an eye on where the power is going and things like that. Or I could just switch it through this device here. Last but not least, let's put it into reverse. The backup camera is nice and clear. The lines do adjust when I turn the steering wheel. Love that feature. And I get a nice 360 camera. The car is yelling at me to put gas in it. I do get a nice 360 camera and I can zoom in. So if I'm going to hook up a trailer, this is huge. This is very, very beneficial. And I can come up here and I can sort of highlight things as I please. So I really like this view. I love the 360. Camera, as you can see, it sort of distorts the view, but but that is that. Then I have some interesting buttons down below that screen for the vehicle itself. Most notably, I do have a camera icon, which is great. I can turn on the cameras whenever I want. I can turn on automatic start-stop, which is great. 
I have tune and volume and skip track and things like that. Then we have the climate controls themselves. I do have heated seats and that heated steering wheel. Defrosters, I have dual zone, which is very nice. And I think the knobs like the Mach-E look very, very good. I think they're very modern and I'm very happy with their design. They look rugged, but also modern, which is kind of a hard demographic to reach. Then I have my USB port and a little cubby down at the bottom. I love this little plaque that you get for your Bronco. It says made in Michigan. I really, really like that. It sort of adds a ruggedness and also, you know, makes you feel special. And then we come to the shifter itself. The shifter is pretty much out of every other Ford product, the F-150 and things like that, but it does have the Bronco on it, which I like. And I can plus minus on the side if that's something I would like to do as well. And then down below that shifter, I have a multi-purpose dial. So if I twist it on the outside, I can go through my different drive modes, which I have normal, eco, sport, slippery, mud or ruts, sand, Baja, and then we're back to normal if you move it all the way back the other way. Again, like the Ford Bronco Sport, the direction in which I twist the dial is the opposite direction in which it moves on the screen, which is kind of disorienting. But other than that, I really love all these modes that you get. And then on top of that dial, you get your specific four wheel drive settings if you wanna change that yourself. Too high, four high, four low. Off to the right of that, we do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Bronco. And unfortunately it fails the big friggin' bottle test. I was hoping, cause this is a larger vehicle that it would pass, but at the end of the day, unfortunately it does not. Then moving up the center console, I have my power mirror adjustments and my power windows. This is actually where the power windows are found much like you would see in a Wrangler because the doors are in fact removable. So they keep them right there to have one less switch that could break when you remove your doors. Center console is pretty basic, nothing really to see. And then we have the seats. The seats are comfortable. Like I said, they are heated. However, I'm not really in love with the look of them. I think they already look a little dated. They kind of remind me of Ford seats from 2009, 2010, which isn't something you wanna see in a brand new car. I'd also like to point out that this Bronco, as spec'd, is $53,000, and it does not have power seats. And, as I was told from the Ford dealer, no Ford Bronco is available with power seats. I think that's a little bit ridiculous, especially because these can get up into the mid 50,000s. Like I said, this is 54,000 about and still no power seats. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats in this two door. So let's go do a back seat review. All right. So I haven't gotten in the back of a two door SUV since like the 90s. Like I did a K5 Blazer and a 84 Forerunner, but something from 2021 that's a two door SUV. This might be tricky. Okay, guess you gotta put the bar back down in order to lock it. We're back here, baby. Um, so we're in the back of the 2021 Ford Bronco two-door. Um, honestly, it's not terrible back here, especially even with this. This is actually, these back seats are pretty good. However, there is a bump down here. Like the uh, the area in which the seats are sitting on is like raised up and there's this sort of bump here. So I can only bring my ankles like six inches from being straight up and down. I, it's kind of hard to explain. But back here, I do have a USB port as well as a 110 volt wall outlet, which is fantastic. I get this little light back here, which is good. It's not gonna turn off because the door is open. But overall, it's actually decent back here. I, I do have cup holders on either side and I can imagine with this roof removed on a warm day, today is like 31 degrees, it is not a warm day. But on a warm day, this would be really, really nice to ride back here. And I don't have a center support like I would in a Jeep Wrangler. So, a huge open air experience. Let's hop around back and talk about the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, hold on, before we talk about the trunk. Being, okay, this is annoying. In the back here, 
you pull this lever. This is the only lever I can actually access as a backseat occupant. Pull that and that allows me to fold it forward and move the seat forward. However, it doesn't lock the seat in place. So I move it forward, as soon as I take my hand off it, it just slides right back and it's gonna squish me. That's really annoying and a serious overlook on Ford's part. Now let's go talk about the cargo space. All right, so we're on the back of the Bronco. And by the way, that taillight is not actually flickering in real life. That is just the frame rate of the camera disagreeing with the taillight. But come up here, there's this little button and then you can actually open up the tailgate, which is pretty neat. Moving inside here, this is, of course is just like a plate frame, things from Ford itself. I love the fact that there are these tie downs right here and it has a little lasso, which is fantastic. Ooh, something I missed is that there's actually a 12 volt outlet behind the back seat. So people can also charge back here if they'd like to. I can also fold up this rear window so you have a huge loading area, which is very, very nice. However, something that I don't like is the fact that with this swinging open tailgate, there's no real lip here. Meaning if you have anything rolling around and you're parked on any sort of incline, as soon as you open this, it's all level ground. It's just gonna roll out. So decent size back here, not crazy, but still pretty good. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I love the look of the new Bronco. I really think they did hit it out of the park with this thing. I think it looks nostalgic enough like the original Bronco, but not overly retro. It's still very modern, still feels very different. And it's fun to still see one in traffic when they're so rare. I love the blue color as well as if you notice up on the front, once we finish our walk around, do to do to do, looks great. Up on the front, I do have these little holders. Those are for brush guards. So basically you can attach a metal wire that goes from there to the top of the windshield. So if a branch is in your way, it's not gonna slam your windshield. It'll sort of ride those metal wires, which is nice. But now we have to get to my final thoughts here on the Ford Bronco from 2021, brought back. Well, I really like it. I think this was much needed. The Wrangler has kind of had a corner on the market for the last nearly two decades. If you wanted a off-roader that you could take the top off that was purpose-built, that isn't comfortable on the street, but is great on the trails, the Wrangler was almost your only option throughout the 2000s. But now a new competitor has re-entered the chat and it's the Bronco. And let me tell you a couple reasons why I like the Bronco better than the Wrangler. First of all, first and foremost, Ford has been doing an amazing job here in 2021 at getting me excited. The Mach-E was exciting. The Maverick is exciting. The Bronco Sport is exciting. The F-150 Power Boost is exciting. Ford has been exciting me recently, which I can't say about all auto manufacturers. But other than that, this is a lot nicer to drive. It rides nicer than the Wrangler. It is definitely helped out by the fact that this removable hardtop actually has sound deadening on the bottom where I've never driven a Wrangler that had that. I'm not saying that's not offered in the Wrangler, but I just haven't experienced it. And overall, the build quality in here does feel a little bit nicer. I haven't heard or felt as many beeps or squeaks as I do normally in the Wranglers, which is always a very nice feeling. This feels better built and I really do enjoy it. However, in the Jeep's argument, the Jeep has been around forever, so it has a better aftermarket and it does have brand recognition. We won World War II with Jeeps, so you gotta give it some credit there. I don't dislike Jeeps, it's just that this is more exciting to me, this is newer, this is fresher, and honestly, it feels from my on-road test as capable. I have to give a huge thank you to Spencer Shipley from PackyWeb Ford who got me this Bronco to review. Spencer is absolutely awesome. If you are looking for a vehicle, please contact Spencer with the information up on the screen. He's absolutely awesome and he will find the correct vehicle for you, whether that be a Bronco, Bronco Sport, F-150, or maybe even a used vehicle. Please contact Spencer with your vehicle needs. He will find the right car for you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.